Today I'm excited to introduce you to the world of crypto art and NFTs. There's a lot of hype around NFTs right now, and though I'm still new to it, I wanted to chime in on this topic. This video is going to focus more on how a digital artist like myself would create and sell NFTs, so if that's what you're interested in, stay tuned. I'll try not to get too technical with my explanations since there are already loads of videos out there from folks who understand the underlying technology way better than I do, but I will do my best to put things in terms that artists can understand. First of all, what is an NFT? An NFT is a digital asset that has been turned into a collectible. These collectibles are sort of like the limited edition prints that traditional artists sell, only you don't necessarily get a printed copy. What you get depends on what the artist offers, and could include additional content like prints, but in essence, when you buy an NFT, you get a download with a unique proof of purchase that cannot be duplicated. I'm really excited about this because one of the things people use to hate on digital art is that it can be reproduced. NFTs solve the problem of selling original digital art by creating rarity. You could download a low-resolution preview of my artwork from my website, but it would be worth nothing. The NFT of my artwork is worth whatever people are willing to pay to own it, just like a traditional painting or a limited edition print. I could sell multiple limited edition NFTs of this painting, or I could sell only one. The rarer the collectible, the more its perceived value increases. If this sounds absurd to you, explain baseball cards. Should the creator choose to, they can also allow buyers to resell their NFT. The ability to make a profit is incentive for collectors to buy work from artists they want to support. Rather than buying a print or joining an artist's Patreon, it may become more mainstream for fans to purchase NFTs. Before we get into creating an NFT, let's just take a quick look at how to buy one, because you'll need a wallet and maybe even some cryptocurrency if you want to sell an NFT. There is a bit of a learning curve to buying and selling NFTs, but it's not too hard. For those of you who may be interested in purchasing my NFTs, you'd need to download a wallet app like Coinbase Wallet or use a software wallet like MetaMask, then purchase some Ethereum with your native currency and then link your wallet to Rarible by scanning a QR code with your phone. It sounds like a lot, but each app guides you through the steps. There are dozens of other websites that sell NFTs and the process for buying is quite similar. I'll pretend to buy an NFT from Brad Colbo. Hi, Brad. And you can see how much it's going for and who owns a copy. If I want to buy this, I can do that. I'll get a prompt on the wallet app on my phone to process the transaction. As of the recording of this video, one downside to buying and selling NFTs are gas fees. Gas fees are required to process your transaction on the network. It's not free to make an NFT, just like it's not free to make a print. Some cost goes into creating and executing a contract between the buyer and the seller, and there's the exchange of funds and the artwork itself. From a buyer's perspective, it's like paying a premium for shipping, handling, framing, and certification when you order a print. Currently, as of March 2021, gas fees are really high. The other week it was around $40 for a transaction, but today it was around $150. There are times of the day when the fees are much lower, but just be aware that that's a factor in the overall price. The website that hosts the NFT may charge a fee as well, which in this case is 2.5%. You do have the option of offering a lower gas fee. Lower fees are like taking the bus. You'll have to wait around and you might not even get picked up. Higher fees are like taking a taxi. It's 10 times more expensive, but you're almost guaranteed to be picked up and you'll get there much faster. Ethereum 2.0, which is coming soon, may render gas fees irrelevant because it changes some things, but that's to be seen. In the meantime, if you plan on making some NFTs, just don't be alarmed by the fees, those are normal. However, be careful with your cryptocurrency. There are lots of people out there who want to take it from you. There may even be people in the chat trying to impersonate me. I've seen it happen on other channels, and I'm sure that this video is fresh meat for them. So if I comment on your post asking you to call a number or go to a link, report it or ignore it. If all this feels sketchy to you, just think back to those times when someone forged a famous painting. There's risk everywhere in the art world, so just stay sharp. Okay, so now let's move on to a demonstration of how to create an NFT. Let's assume you already have some original art. If you don't, then I'd save this video for later and check out some of my digital art tutorials. Considering that 99% of the NFT art out there is a photo with a crappy filter on it, if you can create anything that remotely resembles an original work of art, you're going to stand out. Everyone and their grandma is trying to cash in on NFTs right now, so just don't expect to make one and instantly become a millionaire. 
Just like with selling traditional art, you have to have a following that you can offer your work to. If you don't have a following, it doesn't hurt to put stuff up, but I wouldn't invest a lot of time and money into it until you can gauge demand for your work. If I think about how many hours I've sunk into websites like Zazzle to sell prints versus how much money I've made selling prints, it was a waste of my time. I went way overboard and it just wasn't worth the effort. As far as what makes a good candidate for an NFT, pretty much anything will do. It could be a still image, animation, movie clip, audio. Shoot, people are even buying and selling tweets. Just be sure that you created it. Selling copyrighted work is not going to go down well. Personally, I think animations stand out a lot and add value, so I'm offering a mix of images and animations. There's definitely a lowbrow and surrealism feel to a lot of the work out there. I've chosen to feature my more avant-garde works like animations and surrealism because it's never really found a home alongside the all audiences content that I create for YouTube. I don't see a lot of NFTs of traditional looking landscapes, still life and portraits, but that doesn't mean there isn't an audience for it. This is still very new and so it has some time before it's widely adopted by professional artists. If you're looking to create your own NFTs, I'd recommend OpenSea, Rarible, or Mintable. Mintable has a free option, but Rarible charges a fee as does OpenSea but OpenSea offers free minting after the initial gas fee. I liked the options Rarible offered, so I paid to mint an NFT to try it out. I also have some NFTs I minted for free on Mintable, but they don't give you much control over the reselling terms, so I'm hesitant to list anything expensive. By the time you watch this video, I'm sure I'll be on a few more marketplaces, so have a look at the description of this video for links to my work, or visit my website at aaronrutten.com. If you've already made a name for yourself, you may be able to get involved with a curator. There are lots of websites that are offering to sell and promote your work. I would imagine that like a gallery, they handle the listing on your behalf and take a fee for their services. I've seen plenty of creators selling content in the open marketplace, so you don't have to be curated by an online gallery to be successful at selling NFTs. Each website will walk you through the process for minting an NFT, but essentially you add the artwork files to a listing, enter information like a price and description, there may also be options for reselling and selling the copyright to the image if that's something you want to do. Many websites allow buyers to unlock additional content. In my case, I upload the artwork along with bonus content like a high resolution printable image or full length animation. If you're doing this, you'll want to be sure to make your preview low resolution or else the public may be able to download it. In some cases, you may have to make the main download the low resolution preview and then let the buyers know in the description that they will get the full resolution version. The next step is to pay in Ethereum to mint the item into a collectible on the blockchain. This writes a contract with the terms you set when you created the NFT. If a buyer agrees to this contact by signing it in their wallet, then they have committed to the transaction. It's best to do your minting early in the morning or on the weekends when there is less congestion, otherwise the fee to mint an NFT can be higher than necessary. Once minted, you can sell or even gift the NFT artwork, and it can continue to be resold on the public market. The minted artwork exists inside your crypto wallet, or in some cases the website where you created it, until you sell it or transfer it to a buyer's wallet after payment has been agreed upon. Each website offers different pricing models, but many offer buy it now as well as an auction feature. If you're minting artwork for free, then you aren't committed to anything. And if you create an NFT and then decide that you want to change the price or delete it, you can do that. However, if a buyer purchases one of your NFTs, they own it for life under the original conditions of the contract. I would recommend starting with free minting to get a feel for how it works. Then once you're more confident about what will sell, mint some NFTs if you can do so for a reasonable gas fee. Also try listing on different websites to gain more exposure. It's also worth pointing out that the value of Ethereum changes constantly. So the value of your artwork is linked to the current price. For example, one Ethereum might be worth $1,800 one day and $1,600 the next. If you're selling an NFT for one Ethereum, then the price of your artwork will fluctuate over time. The good news is that compared to traditional currency, Ethereum is decentralized so it cannot be manipulated by a government or entity. It's also not linked to the value of traditional currency, so it could be a useful asset for investing if that's your thing. Some websites will also allow you to buy and sell in other cryptocurrencies, but I'll keep things simple by focusing on Ethereum. Because your transaction is processed in Ethereum, you'll be paid in Ethereum. Ethereum can be converted to your native currency, but there may be a fee involved with that. As I mentioned, the price of cryptocurrency fluctuates wildly, so if you thought you sold a painting for $100, you
you might only be able to get $80 when it finally gets to your bank account because of fees and price fluctuations. But there's also a chance that you thought you made $100, but you waited till the price of Ethereum was higher and then sold. In that case, you'd be making a larger profit. Just as well, the buyer would have gotten a great deal because now that same artwork costs a lot more, and the value of their purchase has gone up should they decide to sell it. Ultimately, I think the bottleneck to selling NFTs is the buyer. Most people do not own cryptocurrency, and many of them may never be able to figure out how to buy an NFT even if they wanted to. It's possible that cryptocurrency could become more widely adopted. If that's the case, then it's up to creators to get cracking on educating their audience about how to buy NFTs. Otherwise, it's going to be some time before the average artist can expect to make any sales in cryptocurrency. I would presume that there are third-party websites out there that may handle all of the conversion for buyers and storage of the NFTs in a wallet, so a buyer could just walk in and buy an NFT without any hassle. Still, that's probably out of reach for the casual art collector. So you have to ask yourself, do I even have fans who use cryptocurrency? And if I do, are any of them art collectors? If you can answer yes to either of those, then you might have a shot at selling some NFTs. If not, then it's probably just a waste of your time. There's a lot of hype around NFTs right now, but that could cool off. I think those artists who are able to get in now should, especially if you have a body of work and you're well-established, but I'm not going to encourage you to do it if you're just making art as a hobby. It's better to focus on other ways of generating income that aren't as complicated and are far more reliable. Regardless of whether I'm successful at selling NFTs doesn't really matter. I'm honestly happy to see digital art take one more step toward being widely accepted as an art form. This is a huge development for digital art, whether you care about cryptocurrency or not. So there you go. I hope that answered some of your questions about how to buy and sell NFTs. If you found this information helpful, smash that like button. And why not sign up for Coinbase using the affiliate link in the description of this video. Once you're on Coinbase, you can buy Ethereum and heck, you could even buy one of my NFTs while you're at it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.